we want you to watch a reconstruction of a strange and sinister case which has been baffling police for the last five months. It's the killing of a little boy. The motive is unclear. What we do know is that the case involves a mysterious nighttime visitor, a disappearing television set, and a car left with its headlights on. The victim, who died from a savage beating, was nine-year-old Christopher Laverack. He lived in Humberside in the Anlaby district of Hull. Every other Friday, when he wasn't spending the weekend with his father, Christopher Laverack was brought here to number seven Harpham Grove to stay with his half-sister and her family. His mother and stepfather made sure that he got there in time for his favourite TV show, The Fall Guy. Christopher always had a good time staying with his half-sister, Kim, and her husband, Stephen Hines. Despite a complicated family life, Christopher was a happy kid. Friends knew him as a shy and sensible lad who loved motorbikes and watching TV. He was getting on well at school and had just recently joined the local church choir. That night, as often happened, Christopher's half-sister, Kim, was driven to a local pub, The Crown, where she worked as a barmaid, leaving husband Stephen with their own young son and Christopher. At the pub in Marfleet Lane, Chris's mother and stepfather stopped off for a drink with Kim before going to visit relatives. Later that evening, with Christopher still watching the television and the baby in bed, Stephen decided to go out. This was the last reported sighting of Christopher Laverack. I won't be long. Keep an eye on Martin. What sort of crisps do you want? Cheese and onion, please. Two cheese and onion. Stephen also went to the Crown, the pub where Kim was working. Back at Harpham Grove, an unfamiliar parked car had caught the eye of a neighbour, who Christopher called Auntie Marge. She was wondering why the car had been left with its headlights on. Steve, I want to talk to you. Steve, let me in. Steve, I want to talk to you. The voice came from someone standing outside Steve's front door. At the dividing wall, Auntie Marge heard the front door being opened. Then all seemed quiet, so she went off to bed. A few minutes later, she heard the car pulling away. That car, according to the best evidence police have, was shaped like this. It's never been traced. By now, Stephen had spent about an hour in the pub. Chris? Chris? Apart from the baby crying, the house was strangely quiet. The television had been ripped out. And then it dawned. Christopher had gone. Stephen ran to tell Kim and then called the police. They started a search in and around the house. Christopher had never run away and his mother had no idea where he was. His real father was contacted but he hadn't seen Chris either. The search went on into the night.
It was intensified at first light, fanning out across wasteland near Harpham Grove. But there was no sign of Christopher. Nor was there the ransom demand that was half expected. Christopher Laverack had now been missing for 36 hours. Expecting the worst, police divers began dragging a nearby stretch of water. But the discovery was not made by the police. At the same time, ten miles away, alongside Beverly Beck, this man was taking his usual Sunday morning stroll with his dog. Christopher Laverack had died as a result of severe head injuries inflicted, the police believe, on Friday night. And Detective Chief Inspector Baker is in charge of that case. Now, that bag that Christopher was found in was actually a carpet bag, wasn't it? Yes, it was a Treader underlay carpet bag, and this is one identical to it. And are you hoping that somebody might find that gun missing, maybe have lost it or yes, left it? Yes, hoping that somebody in the Humberside or Beverly area sometime prior to the 9th of March, might have thrown one away or might have lent one to somebody or might have left one outside and it suddenly disappeared or something like that. How much do you know about how and where he died? Well, we know that Christopher died on the Friday night and we know that he died of severe head injuries and we also know that he died in a field which contained growing winter barley. Now, forensic evidence shows that he died on the Friday night, but it wasn't until the Sunday morning, in fact, that he was found, nine miles away from Harpham Grove in Beverly Beck. How do you think he might have got into Beverly Beck? Well, obviously, we think he's gone in some form of vehicle. Which vehicle, we don't know. Maybe that car, that unidentified car from that night? Well, obviously, we're very interested in that vehicle, and despite numerous appeals to the press and the TV, uh, the driver of that vehicle hasn't come forward. But somebody at the Beck that weekend may have seen something, surely? That's right, and we've had a good response from the public. Many, many people have come forward, but we've never had a sighting of Christopher's body in the Beck until it was seen, actually, on the Sunday morning. So you think somebody perhaps would have parked on that bridge or driven past that bridge and seen something? Somebody could, yes. We did get a lot of reports of vehicles stationary on that uh, bridge, and um, there's uh, roads that go alongside the Beck, and the boy's body could have easily been put in from there. Mm. Now what about this television set? The strange thing about it is that it was ripped out from the back of the set, the flex, while it was still plugged in. That's right. This is the actual flex. That This end was plugged into the wall in Seven Harpen Grove. This end um, went towards the television set and we believe there's a piece missing from here. So what we're hoping to trace is the television set um, and we're hoping that somebody might know of somebody who has got a television set with a unusually short cable or somebody's asked to repair one or somebody sold one or somebody's now got one in the possession and we're also asking for farmers who have uh, been harvesting in fields of winter barley to keep an eye open for this television set and it, we regard this as a vital piece of evidence. We might find who killed Christopher Labrack if we can find that television set. Could well be the case, yes. Mr Baker, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, if you've got that ITT television or know anything else about the murder, the number, remember, 01811 Or you can phone Humberside Police Direct at Hull. The number, Hull 796271. That's 0482 for Hull 796271.